Hello, everyone. My name is Michelle Arrington, and I work in community engagement with Verizon. And I'm excited today to be interviewing one of our favorite community partners, the Food Bank of Northeast Georgia. We are here today with Aaron Barger, the executive director, Kari Cotwright, board member, and Pat Reagan, the director of development for the Food Bank of Northeast Georgia. Welcome, ladies. Aaron, I'm going to start with you. Tell us about the Food Bank of Northeast Georgia. What is your mission and purpose? So thank you so much for the opportunity. The Food Bank of Northeast Georgia was founded 30 years ago with a single and simple purpose, and that is to end food insecurity across our 14 county region in Northeast Georgia. I'm at the Food Bank of Northeast Georgia. We believe that food is absolutely essential. And we believe that food is not a bargaining tool. It's not a weapon. It's not really something that is up for negotiation. So we believe that what is essential cannot be negotiable. And so we're here to solve that problem and that problem really alone. Now, that's amazing to hear. Um, I know we'll get a little bit into it, but especially the last two years with COVID, um, it only highlighted an issue that everyone already knew existed, but really uh, delved into more into it. Um, Car, I want to ask you as a board member, what got you involved with the Food Bank of Northeast Georgia and why are you serving? Um, a, a lot of the reasons I serve are just what Aaron talked about, the mission of the food bank. And I was always very closely tied. I teach at the University of Georgia in the Department of Nutritional Sciences. And we started out our partnership by doing service learning. I had dietetic interns and graduate students that would go and assist with some of their wonderful programs like Food to Kids that helps with uh, children who may be experiencing food insecurity in the community. We've helped with their mobile food banks and we went and did food distribution. So when I came to Athens and moved here, I volunteered myself and did food distribution because I wanted to understand the landscape of hunger within the city of Athens. And one example I'll give you is one, I went to a, a church where one of the distribution sites um, was very early on. I remember being pregnant and I went down this street and there was, there was a line of cars. I mean, just the wrapped around. And I didn't know where I was going. So um, I turned back around and I came in and said, no, Dr. Carrot, you come this way. And um, I was going to volunteer and it was just amazing to see the need, but then to see the need being fulfilled by the food bank. And I just remember leaving with tears in my eyes because I knew we made a difference. And it was later on after partnering with the food bank that I became a board member. That's amazing and inspiring. And I know what um, the community really looks for um, volunteers like that. So Pat, uh, Kari mentioned a few programs. What are some of your highlights and programs that you all have that um, the food bank that really stand out and how you serve the community? Well, a couple of the um, programs we have are Food to Kids, uh, which is a um, program that we provide food to children that have been identified at the different schools that we, we serve in the different in the 14 counties. Uh, where we um, send food home with them on the weekends. Um, as you know, there's a lot of children out there that are uh, literally, all they're thinking about all day is not whether they're going to pass a test or whether they're going to um, see a movie at, at school or enjoy some sort of activity. They're thinking about when their next meal is coming from. And so the Food to Kids program actually helps to alleviate that to some degree where they can actually take food with them home because during the school year, basically they get food, breakfast and lunches. Um, this helps kind of tie them over on the weekends. So we provide every, um, every school week, we provide a bag and sometimes uh, during the holidays, a couple of extra bags on top of that. We also have a senior bag program that supports senior uh, nutrition. Um, we have a lot of seniors out there that do not are, are having to make a decision between paying for prescriptions or buying food. And we're trying to help um, support that, um, that food insecurity within our seniors. But we're also seeing that not only our seniors, but our aging um, uh, population is also starting to participate in this process where they're trying to figure out when, where they're going to spend their money, whether it's uh, rent, prescriptions or food. And so we're really trying to help that process along. Um, we also have a, a very um, a vivacious uh, volunteer program for our community to support uh, these programs as well. 
Thank you so much for, for sharing that. And when you talk about the different populations um, that you serve, I'm going to go back to you, Aaron. Can you tell us your impact, how many families you serve um, and your footprint throughout Georgia? Absolutely. So in the 14 counties we serve, uh, believe it or not, in our first year of service 30 years ago, we mobilized 350,000 pounds of food. And last year, that number has grown to more than 11 million pounds. So we moved 11.3 million pounds of food. Um, so in the world of food banking, pounds is often what food bankers use as the metric for impact. Um, the way to convey that more clearly to everyday folks is, is to trans, translate that number into meals. And so that's more than 10 million meals were mobilized. Um, and that's serving you know, tens of thousands of people um, one of our key values at the Food Bank of Northeast Georgia is to honor and really claim the inherent dignity of all of the people that we serve. So we actually don't track um, individual use of our programs. We want to make it as easy as possible for people to move through lines quickly, get the food that they need, and move on with their day. Um, and that is a reason why we communicate our impacts using that metric versus the number of people served. I love to hear that, um, you know, just speaking of dignity and families and, and making sure that you're respecting that, but also serving the community. So you talk a lot about mobilization, moving pounds, the amount of food you move. I mean, I know you all work with warehouses and distributors and you have a pantry. How much does technology play a role in what you all do and how important is it to have reliable technology? Yeah, it's it's a great question. Um Technology is really the cornerstone of many things that we do. Um, in other words, it, one way to say it is there is absolutely no way we could have moved from mobilizing 350,000 pounds to more than 11 million pounds without technology. So everything from the shopping floor experience, online ordering. So we work with more than 200 agency partners who are able to secure their food through an online ordering process or at a shopping floor. Both of these rely on technology. Um, every day I love to watch our trucks go in and out of this parking lot and they utilize a GPS system that helps us to track and kind of understand the logistical patterns of our drivers and increase our efficiencies. Um, and then technology is going to play a huge role in the future of the food bank. We're hoping to take what is already a pretty sophisticated inventory system and um, improve that, moving to a barcode scanning, which will just increase the efficiency and our insight into the inventory that we have. And that will really equip us to move uh, food at a faster and more effective rate for the people that we serve. Now, that's amazing to hear. Um, you know, I know connectivity, making sure you track, making sure you have data, um, as well as you're serving. So you're able to really see the impact that you're making, especially because your footprint is so large, is extremely important. Um, and, you know, it's something that we partner with a lot of food banks and organizations across the country as well. And making sure that people have reliable technology, connectivity, and that's extremely important. Um, I wanted to ask, and maybe this is a question for each of you or whoever feels free to take it. Um, what did you see, I guess, over the last two years as the biggest need or what stood out that one thing is like, oh, wow, we we're addressing the need. But, you know, we didn't realize maybe we weren't touching this point or we weren't doing this or this is something we need to focus on. I, I'll say from from my perspective, and of course, I'm the Aaron uh, answer that overall for the food bank. But with COVID, of course, we just saw an increased need. There were so many people um, that just, just needed, we already had this large need, but then when the pandemic hit, um, many people were displaced, many people were out of work and they needed more food. And so I know that the food bank stood in the gap, but one of the things that I see as well um, in my research and working with community partners like the Food Bank of Northeast Georgia is the need for skills. And so the Food Bank mm -hmm. of Northeast Georgia is really blessed. They give out some wonderful food products. I mean, vegetables and, and, mm -hmm. and meats and different things that they are able to get out. But what we see on our end, especially as a registered dietitian for me, is the need for especially families, um, mothers and fathers saying, we need help with skill. 
skill building so that we can cook and prepare these meals because as we distribute the food, we know that it's not just access, it's also the uh, ability to be able to prepare the meals for their families. Mm -hmm. That's that's a great answer, um, Kari. So I would say from my seat and the organization um, that, that communities are assuming that as we emerge from the pandemic, that we are back to pre-COVID realities in terms of food insecurity. And so I think that is the biggest mistake that we could make as a community is to assume that just because some things are back to normal for some of us, that all things are back to normal for all of us. And we know that the pandemic disproportionately affected certain people more than others, and more people have been left behind um, in terms of food insecurity. So even though food insecurity rates have improved to some extent, if you compare them to when COVID was at its worst, they are still more um, you know, negatively impacting communities than before COVID. So we do not wanna see anyone left behind and so for, for us, that means giving people access, like Kari said, to food that is fresh, food that they choose, um, that relates to their cultural experience, that they know how to prepare. And then also we think that it's critical that in the, this time of strain and pressure, as we look at housing costs and the cost of childcare, creating immense burdens for families, that when people come to a food bank partner for food, that that is the easiest part of their day. We want to invest in a client experience, and we believe that technology actually has a role to play in that, um, so that when people come to get their food, it's easy for them. And so that's a commitment that we're making to our, our region. That's amazing. Um, I'm sorry, go ahead, go ahead, yes. Well, I just wanted to add this part about the technology. As we know, we work with, in partnership with, with food banks and food banks in Northeast Georgia, but then we also work with other partners like Head Start and you know, child care centers. And so these are our families who um, may be participating and, and getting food from the food bank at times. And we've been able to um, launch virtual cooking classes and we couldn't get those skill sets out there if it weren't for technology, like the technology provided by uh, Verizon. And the parents absolutely love it because they can be in the comfort of their own homes. The children can participate and they're gaining those skills, but they are cooking with some of the foods that they have uh, received from places like the food bank. No, that's amazing to hear. You not even think about it, but I love those virtual cooking classes that did pop up and people got creative in, in using technology in a way that had us thinking outside the box. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to ask Pat, you know, looking for, with your job as director of development, I know you work with a lot of companies like Verizon, um, you know, nonprofits, individuals. What does it look like in regards to um, public-private partnerships um, and corporations supporting the Food Bank of Northeast Georgia? And what are you most looking forward to um, in 2023? Well, I've actually seen a lot of more, a lot more interest um, than we have previously had uh, from the corporate, from the corporate world, um, because they see as you know they see that this is a great partnership to, um, to put more activity into the community, whether it be on a volunteer side or actually putting funding into some of our programs. Um, we provide a lot of marketing opportunities for a corporate, a corporation that would be interested in in partnering with us. Um, but we're seeing um, on a whole, uh, corporations are really opening up their pocketbooks and wanting to invest in their community more. And what better way to invest in your community than uh, putting food into people's homes and helping people through this uh, food insecurity issues that we're dealing with. I can't think of a better way for a, a great partnership and a, and a cause marketing type of relationship. So I wanted to ask each of you, how does leading um, this organization as a woman, um, as a mother, as a community leader, affect your view and how you approach and address your organization and the community at large? I would say that it really does in terms of being involved in an organization that is uh, at the forefront of the community. It, most people are aware of the food bank and the fact that it provides food, but then again, the partnerships 
uh, that also provide food that comes from the food bank sometimes people aren't aware of. And so I think for me, as you said, as a mom, um, as a researcher, as a person who is working to prevent childhood obesity prevention, thinking about family experiences. And so not only are we giving them access, but are we giving them skills? Are they having the type of food um, where they can actually have nutrient dense meals? And so we talk about going beyond food insecurity to nutrition security, right? And so not only that we have food, but we have this nutritious food. And so I applaud the Food Bank of Northeast Georgia because they do have the opportunity to give really nutrient dense um, foods out to um, community members. But I think that experience for them, and, and, and as you know, Michelle, we've been to the food bank, you've seen the operation. And I think even from the floor of the organizations that come in to get meals to even being a person who has participated in food distribution and thinking about the volunteers. And again, when we've done the mobile food pantry, we've had students go out and do food demos so they can be thinking about, I always give the example of one time the food bank was given kohlrabi and they called me up and said, what are we going to do <laughs> with this kohlrabi? And I had my students and we, we did a recipe of a, um, a lo mein, a quick lo mein with vegetables. We shredded the um, kohlrabi in there and it was like a cabbage and everybody loved it. And so people went home with a recipe where they had tasted mm -hmm. and enjoyed kohlrabi and they could put it in their lo mein. Now, of course, we're going to tell them if you're doing ramen to take out that salt packet. You know, so giving them those tips that are very practical, but meeting people where they are. And so I think it was very important when Aaron said that, you know, we don't want to leave people behind. And so there are many different ways that we can teach people to use the resources they are given to provide nutritious meals for their families on a budget. And that's the way I approach it. It's all about meeting people where they are, serving their needs and making sure that people um, are able to get those meals on the table because that's what we want to do as community members, as a mom, you want your family to be healthy. And how do we do that? Mm -hmm. Of course, the strong basis of it is the food we provide and the love we provide. And that's another part of my approach, just loving the community, showing the community my passion. And I mm -hmm. think that's how we build trust because the Food Bank of Northeast Georgia is a trusted mm -hmm. organization and it just carries mm -hmm. on from there. Mm -hmm. For me, being um, a woman and a mother um, really drives home the work that we do. It um, also, as a leader in the community, um, increases my relatability. You know, when I go out and talk about what this means, um, I can authentically call experiences of visiting the, the schools of my sons and, you know, realizing that some of their peers our children benefiting from our childhood nutrition programs. Um, this is something that, you know, we live in our home. It's part of our family value system is to talk about loving our neighbor and answering the question of who is my neighbor as anyone that needs your help is your neighbor. And for me, being a, a woman and a mother, that nurturing instinct is really a fire. Um, and, and that's what fuels this work. Um, for me, it, it drives me to um, never feel really um, nervous or overly anxious about asking people to support this. Um, because I think if, you know, if anyone stops for just a moment and thinks about how would I want someone to fight for my child's right to a meal? You know, that that really drives home in a way that nothing else does. Um, so I, I love being a mother and I love how that role that I play fuels the fire for this work. And from my my perspective, I'm a single mother raising two daughters, but I was raised by a single mother that also taught me the value that I am my, my brother and my sister's keeper. And so I've been able to provide this um value to my children in such a great opportunity through the food bank. Um, I have an uh, older daughter that has actually volunteered here, and I can't think of a better way to teach her the values of volunteering and supporting something that can mean so much to people that she sees every day, the children that she works with every day in school. Um, so from my point of view is the opportunity to teach people about what the food bank does, what it means to a community of 14 counties, uh, what a region of 14 counties looks like, 
Um, each county has a different um, uh, cultural value. Each one has a different group of people. We have extremely rural communities that are in basically food deserts to very populated areas like Athens, Clark County. So being able to share this information uh, of what we have to give to the, to the community at large and then helping teach people what we need to make our job um, work better for the community. I think that's a, a great opportunity as a leader uh, in, in the development, fund development area. Um, but most importantly is being able to share something that is so valuable to the community. Um, certainly during the pandemic, we saw people go from um, literally a paycheck away from being in a very uh, vulnerable mm -hmm. situation. And we're still seeing that, you know, um, not everybody in the world has six months of, of um, money put away for a rainy day. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, it's very unlikely that people have more than a month put away. So we saw what devastation um, happened during the pandemic and it continues to happen. So being able to share that as a leader is really a, a, a great mission for me as a person. And Michelle, I have to give kudos to Pat and Aaron. Aaron's been with us a short time in the role of CEO, but the future is so bright. They have both done an outstanding job, and I just have to say that publicly. Well, you you just led me into my next uh, question. I, I want to I wanted to ask Aaron what um, is on the horizon for 2023 and beyond um, for the Food Bank of Northeast Georgia. Fill us in a little bit, and then Pat, I'm going to to you to talk about um, the volunteerism and your uh, the upcoming Hunger Bowl. I am so excited about the future of the Food Bank of Northeast Georgia. Um, so the great news is we have a really incredible legacy of, you know, three decades of experience and leaders like Dr. Cartwright, Kari have really been a huge part of that story and have served um, to lay this incredibly strong track for what's next. And um, next, we're actually on the cusp of a new facility. So right now we um, move that, you know, 11.3 million pounds in a facility that's about 38,000 square feet. And so we have eyes literally across the street on new property that we just purchased. And we plan to break ground on that um, later this year and build a facility that will expand our space by 65% for a total of about 64,000 square feet. And that will really do two key things that new facility will equip us to move more food. So we anticipate um, an additional bandwidth or capacity for 5 million more pounds of food per year. And then very importantly, the new facility will equip us to increase the variety and freshness of food. So we're actually increasing our frozen storage by 85% in the new facility. Um, right now we're actually having to say no to some fresh product because we're simply out of space um, for that cold stored product. And we take, you know, very seriously, not only bringing in the best items that we can, but managing and handling them in the best way possible. And we're simply, you know, kind of at, at the, um, you know, at the ceiling, literally and figuratively of, of what we can move and what we can handle. So more things are exciting, but I think that that is the single move that we plan to make that will be the foundation of everything else that we're able to do in the next decade. So we're very excited about that. Yeah, I recall visiting when I visited uh, you and Dr. Cartwright uh, earlier this year and, and walking through the facility and seeing all that you all do, but literally, you know, food is stacked up to the top. So I know you're excited about that. And, you know, more space, to your point, um, is more ways to help um, serve the community and families. So, Pat, I know you all have a very exciting um, volunteerism slash Hunger Bowl project coming up. Tell us a little bit about what that is. So our Hunger Bowl is our annual event. It's our biggest event. Um, for it, it brings in probably the most um, single bit of money through a non through a uh, fundraiser um, in our uh, annual activity. Um, so it's a two week program. It, it has a hard beginning, which is all, uh, November second, and it has a hard stop, which is November sixteenth. Is it? <laughs> I have to look. Um, 
Yeah, November 16th. So during that period of time, we encourage uh, teams to join up and um, either do a virtual food drive or a physical food drive uh, where they bring in as many pounds of food or as many dollars as they can um, through that period, that two-week period of time. And uh, on that hard, that day of the hard stop, we, uh, we register all the uh, food that comes in and all the dollars that come in, and we have a, a final winner. Um, so currently we have, uh, we're about at the halfway mark of people signing up. We get about 60 um, teams. We're really hoping that Verizon will join us uh, this year as well um, in, in participating. Um, I actually have a, a little contest among some of my uh, fellowship fellows uh, on staff here to uh, bring in new, um, uh, new teams. But um, it's really kind of a way to completely involve the community into what we're doing. And it's kind of a fun project. There's uh, some really healthy competition between organizations. Yeah. Uh, we have a local uh, private school here that is a, has been our leader for some time. And uh, there's some other organizations that have decided that they're going to take them over this year. So again, it's really healthy uh, competition, but it's a fun way for us to one, teach people about what we're doing and two, bringing some funds, some necessary funds into our, into our organization. And, you know, as I mentioned, our volunteerism, um, I love that you also have the virtual aspect where people can still participate. Um, we have a plan, um, our corporate social responsibility plan through Verizon called Citizen Verizon. And so it's our economic environment and social advancement plan to address critical needs in the community. Um, and so I'm working right now to get us signed up on our volunteer portal um, so that people can participate in this plan and make sure that we're a part of it and doing our best. Um, it sounds pretty competitive, so <laughs> I hope we can can show up and show out, but I think it's such a fun way um, that the community can be involved and feel like it's making an impact. Um, Michelle, um, I'll, I'll let you in on a little secret because we go way back, you've been here for the tour and that always kind of advances the relationship. Um, you, you know what we're about and we really appreciate your support. The secret sauce to winning the Hunger Bowl is donating funds and not pounds. Okay. Um, so something that a lot of people don't realize is that a dollar at the Food Bank of Northeast Georgia equals three balanced meals. Um, so it's really difficult to collect the amount of food that can really match or compare to the purchasing power of the Food Bank of Northeast Georgia. Now, we know that some folks just love to get their hands on food items, that there's a tangibility to that. So we say yes and thank you to all forms of support. Um, but really the way to cross the finish line is, is the dollars, which equal three balanced meals. That's amazing to hear. And I think that really shows the impact. And to your point, people will know they're really making an impact with every dollar that they're able to donate. Um, so looking forward, we talked a little bit about 2023. But I wanted to ask, um, and, and Dr. Cartwright, maybe you can address this one. What is, as a board member, what you believe is the overall vision for the food bank um, as we move forward in the future? And how do you uh, continue to accomplish that goal as well as a board member? Well, we have a, a, a very dedicated board member, uh, Richard, who has been there. I don't, how many years has Richard been there, uh, Aaron? Many, I many would, years. I would say 30. He was yeah, one of the original he's, founders. He's yeah. been there from the start. So he always says, you know, that our mantra is to end hunger. That's it. That's the vision. <laughs> and so, you know, vision should be big. And, and, and that's what mm -hmm. it is. And so when you think about what Aaron said about, you know, gaining this new facility, that is a game changer. That is a world changer for the Food Bank of Northeast Georgia, because if we can uh, get more food and serve more families, we are going toward the mission of ending hunger. And so when you think about that, um, I, I just love all of the possibilities, uh, having more reach. As Pat mentioned, there are, I think sometimes people forget, it's the food bank of Northeast Georgia. So you think about Athens because we're located in Athens, but then you have some very rural communities that don't have as much access as places like Athens. And so the food bank makes such a difference. Mm -hmm. What I would like to see also as a board member and as a partner 
is to grow partnerships, right? And because as we collaborate, we can do more. And so that was one of the things, like I said, in my research lab, we do com community-based participatory research. And it was important for me to volunteer, you know, and to see what was going on and to send my students in the field. So I want to see us uh, filling the gap serving that need because as they grow they'll need more partners they'll meet need more help mm -hmm. and to do more outreach and Aaron has been really wonderful about organizing the board and putting us in different committees like the mission committee and making sure that we're doing the type of outreach that we need to do and growing partnerships so I see that I see mm -hmm. um, us just working toward that that vision of ending hunger and making sure that everybody has an opportunity to have a healthy meal. And mm -hmm. I, you know, I'm gonna I'm throw something back to Erin because she's the, the she's running the ship. <laughs> Actually, Kari, you nailed it. I'm I'm so excited to. I love it. You know, it's like the magic when you're the CEO and the board member and the CEO are saying the same thing about where the organization is going. That's always a really good sign. Um, and and actually, the the only other single thing we could do, um, you know connected to building the new facility, which we've already discussed, the other single thing that we could do to ensure that we will actually end food insecurity in our region um, is to build our partnerships. Because distributing our way out of hunger um, is, is a no-go. Um, you know, it is, it is not possible for an organization of our size or even double our size to have all of the um, the burden of that level of a problem resting on a single organization. So we currently have more than 200 agency partners and about 90% of our food is mobilized through those partnerships. Hmm. And um, my goal is to grow the number of partners within the next year um, to increase that number by 50. We've actually kind of recast one of our positions here um, someone who was doing a great job of, of leading various programs. We've actually kind of retasked her and her leadership with the manager of the agency experience. So that's a new position we created. And the goal of that position is to recruit, sustain, and celebrate the partners that we have. So if anyone is listening to this conversation and you're in any of our 14 counties um, and you're saying, you know, my church, my civic group, my fill in the blank um, would like to help the food bank move pounds. We would like to participate in sharing food with our neighbors. We would love to work with you. That is amazing to hear. I was going to ask, how do we get in touch with you all? How do we find you? Um, so, you know, do you all, are you on social media? I know we can go to your website. What's the best way people can get in touch with you all to volunteer, to donate, and to continue to follow the story? Uh, so the, the great news is you can find us in, in all of the usual places. So we have a Facebook page, Food Bank of Northeast Georgia, um, on LinkedIn. Pat and I are, are on LinkedIn as well as the organization. And then our, um, our website, foodbanknega.org. And there are actually tabs um, for those interested in volunteering or connecting with us in a philanthropic way. Um, and then, of course, the people who are looking for food also can find that information on our website as well. That's awesome. And I wanted to ask every each of you to leave us with one parting word or thought about um, the Food Bank of Northeast Georgia, if, if you will. And Pat, I'll see you first in my corner, so I'll, I'll put you on the spot first. <laughs> Well, we oftentimes we're asked, um, what does the food bank mean to us? And to me, it means... Um, a joyful place to be and a joyful way to support our community. Um, what better way to um, share your life with um, other people than through food? And so um, I guess joy would be one of those words that I would share mm -hmm. and, and support what, how I feel about working here at the food bank. Dr. Cottonwright. I, I would say mobilize. I, I just, the energy, um, the leadership, the, the people, the employees, the people in the community are mobilized to uh, to this effort of, of reducing and eliminating hunger. I'm very excited about that and making sure that people just have access to healthy meals. M Michelle and I enjoy good food and good meals and uh, both of us enjoy cooking and, and, and that's a part of my passion. So we can mobilize communities to um, have healthy meals and the skills to prepare them. It, it just, it helps to launch a healthier generation. And that's what I'm all about. And so I just am so excited about the mobilization and the growth of the food bank. 
And Aaron, we'll of course end with you. Um, oh, thank you. Um, this this conversation has been delightful, and the word that comes to mind for me is universal. Um, the need for food, the love of food, is universal. Um, I've had the opportunity to live in various parts of the world, and it is really incredible um, how many hours humans spend talking about food, preparing food. You know, when one meal ends, people usually are talking about, you know, another great meal they've had or another great meal they're going to have in the future. And I love how universal and unifying food is. It is the most simple thing. And what is simple, what is essential cannot be negotiable. And so that's why we're here today. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Um, thank you for allowing Verizon to be a community partner and continue to support the work that you do. Um, it's so important. And this has been amazing. Thank you thank so you. much. Thank you so much.